Since October 7th, the world has come out in so many horrific ways of being not anti-Israel alone, but anti-Semitic. Seeing this, how important is it for Christians to show solidarity and standing, not only for the nation of Israel, but standing against anti-Semitism? Well, I don't think there's, there's any way to overestimate the impact of this new brotherhood of destiny. That's what I call it. Yes. It's a brotherhood of destiny because it is historic. What is happening right now, Pastor Larry, is in every way as historic and as profound and as manifest as the day that David stood up to Goliath. Wow. Wow. And in years to come, these days we're living through now will be written about and spoken about in ways that should make us all proud to be privileged to be part of this miracle. Amen. And the miracle is this unprecedented brotherhood that upends the history of the last 2,000 years. It's quite extraordinary. Amen. And Jews and Christians standing together help to make a very clear point here, which is that although the world is filled with many cultures, there is only one civilization. And it's not just me saying that. The evidence is that the only civilization in the world to which people are risking their lives of drowning in the Mediterranean is the Bible-based civilization. Not everybody recognizes right. that it's Bible-based. Right. Right. Oh, it's from the Greeks and it's from the Romans. Well, where do you think they got it? <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so every aspect of it, you know, you know what are the... Can I take another yes, minute yes, on this? Please. Uh, what are the, the basics of civilization are very straightforward. One is the replacement of violence by communication, collaboration, and cooperation. Replacing bullets with ballots. Mm. Mm. Come on. Come on. Okay, this is not found in Saudi Arabia. Right. This is not found in Bangladesh. This is part of civilization. Call it Western civilization if you like, but its roots are in the Bible. Yes. Yes. A second part of civilization is a recognition that God put us on this earth to guard it and to look after it. And that's the reason that the verse in the beginning of Genesis, God put us, Adam in the garden, to work it and to go. We're in the garden, everybody. Yes. It's all of us. Yes. And we're supposed to work it and make it happen. That is part of an understanding of civilization. And that means that we use energy. And why the other side hates the use of energy, right? They, they, they hate me for having a 12-cylinder car. Yeah. They should only know I also have a two-cylinder outboard. <laughs> That's right. And a one-cylinder lawnmower. That's right. So they hate the use of energy. Why? Because there are only two explanations for how we arrived on this planet. One is God created us in his image and put us here. Right. Right. But there is another one, and it is believed in just as religiously as we believe in the first. The other one is by a lengthy process of unaided materialistic evolution, primitive protoplasm miraculously turned into plumbers and proctologists and ballerinas <laughs> and bookkeepers. That's right. And you shouldn't laugh at other people's religion. It's very rude. <laughs> that is, the, these are the two approaches. And it turns out 
that there is one inconvenient truth that distinguishes people. Because in the unaided materialistic evolutionary explanation for our unique presence on the planet, the implication is that we are part of a long continuation. Single-celled amoeba, alligators, racehorses, chimpanzees, and us. And us. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. And that means we're all the same. But here's a problem. We're the only creatures that use outside sources of energy. Right. Cats and camels and cows and kangaroos all derive energy from the food they eat. And if a camel wants to get from Morocco to Saudi Arabia, it walks. Just make sure it has enough food and drink. Mm -hmm. But if we want to go to New York, why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. San Antonio. Yeah, there you go. Um, we don't walk. We use external energy. Right. And we put it into a jet engine. And that turns into thrust. And the genius of the human design, the ability God gave us to create, puts wings to convert the thrust into lift. And, and in 20 minutes, we're in San Antonio. But to do that, we needed to use energy. Please... I've got two requests today. Stop using the term fossil fuels. It's really a, 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 a term that has been employed right. by the left in order to help stop us using fuel. They want us to stop using fuel because using it is a unique human prerogative. Using fuel, using energy emphasizes that he created us. Yes, amen. Man. And so no longer fossil fuel. The correct term is God-given fuel. Wow. wow. It's a good thing because to use fuel means you don't have to walk to San Antonio. And if you did have to, you wouldn't be able to be here today. You'd have to be on the road. And the fact that we can join in fellowship and in commitment to the Lord, that's because we use fuel. That's because we're able to find ourselves the time and the ability to do this. Animals can't do that. Animals have to eat and gather 24-7. It's really important. This is all part of civilization. And this civilization springs from the Bible. Amen. And the, it's a civilization that was built by Christianity, fueled and inspired by its Jewish roots. Amen. Amen.